start the policy subcommittee uh, with policy revisions um, for policy 5132 school attire. There were a few um, additions that were done to this. We discussed them in the last meeting. And that um, the black the black is also, it's in there in some portions. It's just not in there for um, tops. It's in there for bottoms already. But we're going to add it for an additional top as well, the color black. They can wear black? So they have, it's in there already that they can wear black. So on the first page under number one where it says boys, right, Erica? Correct. Where um, A, we're going to add the word jeans mm -hmm. to that sentence. So it's pants, jeans, or shorts. And in B, we're going to do tops and solid blue, black, white, burgundy um, to make sure that the color black is included. Sure. And then in, in number two under girls. Yeah, gonna, I have an issue with that. Differentiating between the sexes, it actually is not appropriate. It is. Do you want to combine? You're, you're this not. was the this was the original policy. You have to make yeah. it gender equity. So we can you make can. it. We can make it. Use we can combine equity. it to mm -hmm. say you know okay. everything all together, and anybody yeah. who whatever gender you are can wear whatever you want to wear. Because I mean, they're finding yeah. girls who are you know discriminated against because of leggings or something showing. Really, you're victim shaming and reinforcing supposedly the rape culture, where you really should be more worried about. I mean, girls shouldn't have to worry about boys not acting in control. They need to act in control. It shouldn't be put on girls. So we'll do, we'll get rid of boys, we'll get rid of girls. A, we'll read pants, jeans, shorts, skirts, skorts, dresses, or jumpers, mm -hmm. in solid navy blue, black, or khaki, right? Covering, worn, covering undergarments and no more than two inches above the kneecap. And then B, we'll read, Tops in solid blue, black, white, or burgundy, button down, pullover, turtleneck style, so that it reads all as one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't even think you can say. You should get rid of the cleavage comment. You should get rid no of No cleavage comment should be in there. Mm -hmm. And is you there also a should not have yeah. comment um, in there. In there section is. B under girls. And you should not, I don't think you should d d say two inches above of appropriate length, and then you know if it's something is appropriate or not. If it's offensive to someone else in any way, or bothersome, or interferes with the educational process in the classroom, then then that's a problem. So okay, so start at A. Where so it's going to say pants, jeans, shorts, in solid navy blue, black, or khaki, worn completely, covering undergarments at a, at an appropriate length. Okay, Is that what but you're saying? so I have a little bra strap showing. Oh gee, I better I, I can't. I, I don't understand. No, you cannot we, hold that. This is, that's under you pants. Cannot. You can't. That's under pants. So that's meaning so that their underwear aren't showing. I get it. I think we should re redo this and, and, and make sure that it it, it is up to date I, with I, the current I went through a lot of standards. research today about girls' self-esteem yeah. being associated with graphic I'm not being cool, violence. guys. No, I know. No, I it's understand huge. it. Then it's maybe huge. you guys, why don't you hold another policy Sorry. subcommittee to revise it? Because it sounds like it needs some more significant re revision. I think it does. I really think, but I think it's really can easy you to do. The next time, like prior to meeting, if you're researching and think, so that way we can start working yeah, on Yeah, no, I just did it today, meeting. looking at it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because this came out last week and we yeah. discussed it, so you guys have time to look at the policy. So instead of keep going, I looked at the there policy. Are parents who want to go school shopping now. I know. Not in another two weeks when we have a meeting or possibly don't have a meeting. Well, but that, that's what so, I'm saying. So then the policy. Either way, so we, have a, we have a uniform policy. It, it's, it's and and it really anywhere. needs to be adjusted. Yeah. So but, I think but, you guys got the numerous emails about it. I so did. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. But, but they were all like, right. I get that. And I get that they want changes. But every change brings forth, you know, there right. are also These new are, updates coming from the state even now. SEL probably, is, is it at all discussed with it, you know, SEL and what goes on in the classroom and so the schools? So it won't just be and, a policy subcommittee, then it'll have to be a special meeting specifically for a policy because if we're not meeting in August, then how do we get set this into motion prior to the start of the school yep, year? She's right. Right. So I, no, mean, I understand your frustration with it. Yeah. yeah, it is because if you've had these feelings and these thoughts, a simple email would have done justice so that this could have been worked on prior to coming into the meeting. I apologize. I'm I thought we no, had discussed it in a meeting. 
No, we do, but if you have ideas to change the policy or the wording like you're bringing forth now, obviously if the policy corrections are uh, done, this packet came out on Friday. Yeah, this I wanted to do it with everybody, not just privately. No, it, obviously it makes sense, but if the wording, if you're saying these are, you know, the wording and the gender and the roles. But Erica, are, isn't there a K policy on, on what you can and can't put in dress code anymore? There I don't think you is, can but even say two, what it is two inches of above head, the knee, yeah. guys. I really, I've been, we've been working on this in our building for a long time. That's how I know. I knew this was going to, like. Gee, I don't think there is an actual policy. I guess it depends on how we're going to word it, how we can word it, but there is a standing policy. We do have the right to, to tweak it a little, but there is something standing. I don't know how you guys want to do it. I know I jumped in on it, so sorry I jumped in, but no, there is something it actually in place, so. I'm not sure. For we should go off. review back to the policy as is for, you know, because we're still working on the policy. Now, in other words, there is a policy, right? We have one for right. the board. It's and we're looking to make some changes. So go ahead, maybe, you know, maybe make a statement that jeans can be added and black, the color black can be added. So there are still standards to be had, but the policy will be rewritten and through the guidelines of the state, too, of what can be and how it's written now. Because it has t totally changed, right? Because of reasons that you mentioned. Yeah. And there so, are people going to court with it. I was thinking a similar thing, that we do have a policy. Yes, we do. And, you know, the other part of the policy is the enforcement part of it. It's mm -hmm. like uh, marijuana is a federally against the law, but state, it, says it's legal, so the federal government chooses not to enforce it. So I was thinking until we get the details done, it's really an enforcement issue rather than a policy issue. Right, but if we have parents that are going to be buying, the you know what I mean, they want to know what they're buying. Mm -hmm. There's a very small window when uniforms are available and in stock and in assorted sizes so that your children have a variety of clothing. So I mean, it's not like... I mean, we have school in a month, so. Mm. Well, we've had a uniform policy since 2013. It shouldn't be a surprise. It's not a surprise, but last year it was very flexible, so, and kids grow through seasons. Yes. So I yes. think it's fair to give them enough time to be able yep. to purchase the correct items and have some flexibility to the um, dress code. But, I so, mean, last year we did say only for that year there would be correct. some flexibility. So, so given the again, fact that COVID is not really going away, yeah, as we know, we're going to be wearing masks probably and whatnot. We're not wearing masks. What, Erica? I, there's no this. definitive um, guidance on that yet, but um, masks will be mandated on school buses. That's a that's a yeah. definitive. That's the only thing they said. But they, you know, they said that the guidance will be out in a in a couple weeks and. I, I can't say one way or the other, but it, it appears like they're leaning towards the wearing of masks. But again, that guidance isn't out yet, and maybe they're waiting to see the vaccination rates and to evaluate mm -hmm. some other things to make the best decision as we get closer, for kids yeah. as just, we get closer. Just to figure back on what Tommy said, and again, I jumped in, but I think as a, as a district or as a whole, as you as the, you know, our CEOs to speak, we need to just ensure that the, the enforcement's going to be in place because you can have one principal being a little lax and going to say fair about it, and then another principal hardcore because then you're going to get the frustrated parents that are going to be blowing up our phones 240. And I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but they need to be, it needs to be across the board, and you need to make sure I could work with my that. team. Yep, I could work with my team on that. I think relaxing it relative to jeans and hooded sweatshirts is going going to help a significant amount. And it amount. needs to be equitable. Because and, and you see one girl get sent to the principal's office because of her shorts, because the way her body looks, Happy and then someone else. You're leaving? Same exact no. shorts. By Tom not, Kudlov. Not maybe not as in the same shape, she has but a meeting. they don't get bothered. RTC. Yeah, of course it is. So I made some notes. If Melissa, if you could email me the Word version, I can probably have it reposted, have you repost it to, I can make some quick edits and have it reposted to um, the drive for you guys to look at if you'd like to me to do the edits now. And we'll move on to um, the bus conduct. Yes. So um, I was talking with our new bus company and reviewing some of our transportation policies and noticed that some of the language in our old policy was, was outdated and needed some updating. 
Um, and I also took some of the language from our um, acceptable electronics use policy and inserted it here. And so um, I'm asking the board for um, approval of this revised uh, policy so that the bus company is aware and I could also circulate this to administration and make sure our parents are aware. I'll put it in our, our district handbook, parent handbook, um, relative to some changes. Lots of safety stuff, lots of sort of rules and regulations, outlines it a little a little clearer and um, makes things just a little bit more explicit. So the first one is the actual policy, the bus conduct, and then the regulation follows with the 16 items. What is the, um, the only one that I really don't agree with is the cell phone use for the student. I mean, it's after school hours, high school students could, middle, elementary, oh, elementary and middle school, yeah. not permitted to use cell phones on the bus. Um, and K-12 oh, are not to use cell phones or devices while to on record, the bus. To record video on the bus. K-12 are not permitted to use cell phones or any device to record or video while on the bus. No TikTok on the bus. No. 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 So how is that going to happen when you have an entire bus of middle schoolers? I mean, I have a middle schooler. I know. Lisa, I know you have a middle schooler. I, I, that's going to be, so what, everybody's going to get written up on the bus? I mean, I think it's just going to be a You know what's going to, you know, know what that be. covers? It covers the kid who sends something inappropriate, yeah. gets caught, and he, they know that that's a rule not to do what it. What if they're texting their mom? Right. Yeah. So that, I, I, I think that's, I think the cell phone thing on the bus, I mean. I can see the video, but. No, that's why you're saying they can use their cell phones. So, no, the, 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 no, the CAVE policy is elementary, middle school students are not permitted to use cell phones on the bus. Or any device. K-12 students are not permitted to use cell phones or any device to record. So, so if you're, you know, if you're a high school student, you can use your phone on the bus. If you want to relax that and say K-12 students are not permitted to use cell phones or any device to record or video on the bus, that means they can use their devices on the bus, but they shouldn't be recording or videoing like anything that. on the bus. Personally, that's just me. I mean, I think that's better. So that would be a strike through of the first sentence in number 15. But, mm -hmm. um, kids gotta use your phone. What about Addie? Addie? Um, she is, <laughs> there's a reason why I do wanna make sure I stay to talk about this. She did get in trouble. So again, just across the board, she got in trouble, I took it away, it was a big deal. But, you just gotta make sure it's across the board. Yeah, you know, right. It's, it's, trouble. She it's crazy it because on the bus, what what I hear <laughs> from the bus sometimes company and know, the right? drivers is that when they're on the bus and they're on their cell phones, in particular, and she was called the elementary me, like, I don't care. and middle school, <laughs> they're always hanging over each other's cell phones, and so they're hanging over seats or they're running from one seat to look at the other's one cell, and it creates an unsafe environment. When you look at the high school kids when they get on the bus, they're like this in their yeah. own in their own seats like this. Yeah. But middle school and elementary kids, it's a very like so it creates an unsafe un environment because they're hanging over the seats, looking at their friend's cell phone in front of them. They're turning around, hanging over the seat behind them. They're going across the way. They're passing cell phones. They're falling on the floor, and so it does create a little bit of an unsafe environment. Don't that was the input. Correct. That, that they, they need to stay in their seat. seat. I, right. I mean, they do. They do. So the real and deal I, is you must be in your seat at all times. Yeah. Right. I'm just saying that was the feedback yeah. that was provided to me. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just the wording of it, but it says the driver is in complete charge of the bus and the children being transported. And then they make changes in the seating arrangement and discipline as it is required. They don't because they write it and give it to the principal. Well, I think it's No, the on, drivers, I think, do the seating They can charts. make them move their seats. No, 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 as, as the discipline. They're in complete charge of the bus and the children being transported and make all reasonable steps to ensure the safety, which I understand. I don't know. That sentence, for whatever reason, bothers me. I don't know why. I just don't like the way it, like, I don't know. Because they so when we say they, they, don't, they don't take on any disciplinary action. They hand it over no. to the principal. So I, I think feel that's like what, that I, maybe it's the word right arrange. Area. Like, when I see arrange, arrange for discipline, I'm mm -hmm. thinking, like, they're not actually doing the discipline Maybe action. Discipline they're reporting it. We can put report discipline a, as required. Report, well, yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I would just take a range out for the thing because they're. I don't know if you want to put report discipline. 
report issues. discipline so as it is required. Yeah. Or report disciplinary yeah, issues. Yeah, I think just the, the wording. Yeah, exactly. I just think it just kind of leaves it a gray area where one bus driver may interpret that as they can enforce discipline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't know. I think it was kind like, of a gray know. area sentence. And yep, maybe tied to the top so, of the bus. But they should yeah. be able to change seating if needed. The yeah, driver absolutely. may make changes in seating, report disciplinary issues as required, and right. may take all reasonable steps. Okay. Yeah. All right. Got it. Okay. I think that's okay. Does anybody else have anything for that policy? No, but I do would like to let's let's make sure that we sit down and look at what the latest is and then what she's right? actually doing that as we speak. Oh. She had um, Melissa Center like Eric. Uh, I sure. said I'm not in Melissa Center. Thank you. So that way it doesn't have to be a special meeting. She's going to try and work on it during the meeting. So that the verbiage is right and then she's um, going to the drive. If RJ can run the rest of the finance meeting, I can work on some of those changes. Mm -hmm. Is Perfect. that all right? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Jack, I want to say something on this matter. Yes, go ahead, Jack. Okay, so Erica, what you're talking about, and I, I understand completely, arrange your discipline. If you look on a five, that's covered right there. So you can actually take that out. Drivers can report any misconduct on their bus and any discipline action they may take to the principal of the school. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. It is. You could really just keep the first the two driver. sentences, yeah. Yeah. They may make changes in the seating and make all reasonable steps to ensure the safety of the buses and passengers. So we can kind of strike that entire disciplinary yeah. note there. Got it. Because it's in five. Thank you, Jack. You're welcome. So there's, do we have this in a word version? Does anyone else have anything for, um, the bus conduct? Okay. Melissa, do we have 5132 in a word version so I can make edits? All right, so then we can close the policy subcommittee. RJ. Okay, so first we'll start off with the POs over 7,000. There's two stacks, 2021 year and the current 21-22 year. You'll also see the in invoices for the fiscal year 2020-2021, as well as 2021-2022. Most of our invoices now you're going to see our blanket set up for the entire year. Um, so if there's any questions on those, let me know. So moving on, we have our cafeteria report. Our month of June netted us a profit of just over $80,000 and our fiscal year, year to date total of just over a million dollars. As we've been discussing in the last few months, we'll be making upgrades to our food service program in line with mostly equipment, added products, increased uh, food quality for the upcoming school year to properly plan for um, not having such an abundance of cash flow at the end of the next fiscal year. Any questions on that? Okay. So moving on, um, rental account and end of year high school projects. About a month ago, I came to you with a few projects that were on a wish list of what we wanted to get done at the end of the year. Funding was made um, was made available and. In reviewing our accounts as we approach the end of the year, our rental account has a very hefty balance in it, upwards of $100,000. And I think it's prudent for us to use that money to upgrade our facilities here to increase our potential for rental in income. And it will we'll also take the burden off of the general fund and allow us to do some other things with that money. So two of those projects that I had projected in that time ago was for the high school fencing for the baseball and softball fields and the high school wrestling mats. Those total just under $50,000 and I am proposing tonight for you to take action on um, allocating that money from that rental account rather than the general fund. Um, our rental account has upwards near $100,000 in it, so I, it, we are in very strong position. 
But I don't think it's right for us to let that money sit, sit there without properly updating our facilities accordingly. How about the auditorium? Are we all updated with sound system and lighting? Correct. We will be contacting HB Communications and doing all the necessary upgrades. We've been doing that yearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we will continue to do that, and that money is used for that. Right. Two but, years ago when I went to see the play, I felt so bad that the kids that were performing, their mics kept going on and I off. I and think we actually did it right after that. Yeah, right. I, I did too. Right after, because then, I, yeah. I know the mics yeah. were oh. done, the lighting was upgraded. Mm -hmm. So we will continue to do the ma the yearly uh, upgrades to maintain that. And also if any any larger items come forth, the money is there to do that. Yeah, just so it's, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned this. Just so it's known that the, it's not only just athletic upgrades that are being yeah. done at that. Correct. That it's there it's, was, it's you campus know, wide. You know. Yeah. Anything that yeah. any to me that account is used for anything that could potentially be used for rental to bring us income. So if we were to rent the softball fields out for tournaments, or right. the high school uses the gym for basketball, wrestling, or softball, for dance. Correct. Yeah. correct. Everything will be upgraded as need needed. So any auditorium upgrades that, that come forward will be paid for that as well. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Right um, Can you like set a threshold on what we should keep in the rental account? We could. I can bring that forward for our next meeting. Yeah, let's see okay. what might be a healthy, you know, cushion balance just yeah. to have. I think a minimum would be sufficient. I don't yeah. want to say we have to spend to that amount because I don't want to spend just to spend. Right, yeah. But, no, try and keep yeah. no less. But try not to go below yeah. a certain. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, that works. The next item in the discussions is the invoice payments. Just like we discussed in, per in personnel, there are some bills that get paid, like our Anthem bill that we need to pay. So if we do not have that August 10th meeting, which it sounds like we will not, I'm just asking for permission to pay those bills without board approval. Being that we already approved this in the budget, I, I'm going to say you already got our permission. Okay. But just I don't putting know it out there. Everybody else feels about that. Yeah, I'm just. It, I mean, and if it's, they want some type of wording that says for the August payments, I yeah. think that's fair. Well, we did it last summer. We didn't have to. Oh. Just putting it out there. Whatever yeah. you need to do to make it happen. Just putting out there that. Eric, did you remember we voted it online? Did we have to do anything? We, you guys show? sent us something to make us, and then we had to hit. We yeah, saw, and, you, and we, we got accused by having an illegal meeting. Yeah, so we can't. Do you want us to make a motion, or could we just? It's really just information on the motion. Yeah, legally we do not need to approve invoices. It's right. just not done. Yeah, but we do it. I know, so. but we do it. So if maybe just one motion for invoices and allowing us to hire. Okay. So we to add that too? Yep. 7.15. Well, I think we should do that. Excuse me. It's okay. very hard to. Excuse me. Can you hear me? To close it. Yes. What, what, are you, what are your thoughts? Hold there? on, Jack. He, he, he can't hear you. Come. Jack can't hear you. What, Jack? Okay. It's very hard to hear sometimes. RJ, I need you to speak up a little more clearly. Are you. Did you. I had a question on invoices. Is this the appropriate time? I'm not sure where you're at. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Perfect. All right. So I had a question on page 10 of the Hussey Seating Company. Yep. Inspection of bleachers and maintenance or inspection and maintenance of bleachers. 1300 at the middle school and 3800 at the high school for a total of $5,100. My question is, I'd like to know what was done. I mean, is that just an, do they walk in and they get $1,500, $1,300? No, they, they do any maintenance. They spend um, a few I think, hours. I think I would like to know what maintenance was done for those figures. So the, this is an annual inspection that they, they come out and do. They run the motors to make sure that the. That okay, they, I can't hear you. Maybe come near here. Can I, yeah, but no, she can I'm maybe. Just gonna move the laptop closer to oh, the go, yeah, Jack sure. will come to you. Jack, you're being transported. Hold on one second. Can you hear me now, Jack? <laughs> Jack, can you hear me now? I don't think so. Remember, remember, maybe his uh, mic doesn't work. He, he was on the phone with me earlier, and his, his Wi-Fi isn't good. Can you hear us now or no? Yeah, I hear you very oh. well. Thanks. Can you hear me, Jack? We need yeah. him to stay. Okay, so I spoke with Anthony on this, and they come out every year to check the... I know at the high school they check the mechanics of the bleachers to make sure they operate because it's done with the remote to go in and out, and that the, the safety hazards are all taken care of. I can request a report from him to know if there were any upgrades made, but I know they do come out every year to make sure that they're functioning properly and safely. 
Yeah, I understand. I would just like to know, I mean, it says maintenance and inspection. So I understand they're going to come out and inspect. I would just like to know what they did, if okay. there was maintenance required and what it was yep. to justify the amounts. That's all I'm asking. You got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else, Jack? No, I'm good. Okay, so the last piece on their discussions is the bids. You will have you have three bid recommendations in your packet this evening. Um, the first is for mower, motor and blower wheel replacements at JMMS and East Haven Academy. Um, we went out to bid for ten days. M MCOR was the only bidder at ninety nine thousand six forty. It is my recommendation to move forward with them. They are our only bidder but they have done an extensive amount of work for us in the past few years and we are very satisfied with their work. So that is my recommendation. Um, in speaking with them after opening the bid, they will be able to get these done hopefully with approval tonight. They will order all the parts and hopefully get these all done before school starts. This is an, um, will be paid for by ESSER II grant funding. The second bid you all is, is also paid for, all three of these are paid by ESSER II grant funding. Um, but the second is for the all-purpose room, um, installing an HVAC system at Tuttle School. If many of you go in the multi-purpose room there, um, the air conditioning is non non-existent. There, we're repairing it more, more often than, than not. So this is a, a bid to replace that system for 135212 MCOR, again, was the only bid bidder, and I'm recommending we move forward with them for that as well. The last bid in front of you tonight is for two three-ton ductless heat pumps in the multi-purpose room at, at the academy for $21,029. MCOR, again, was the only bidder. This will be for the cafeteria space that they use for lunch. They also use this for the gym area. There will be two uh, ductless air, air systems included in there, so that will be air conditioned for the students. And I believe they also have heat capacity, so in the win winter, if temperature is not controlled there. There's also an extra variant in there to warm the room. So those three are my three recommendations for that. I know um, the academy and the middle school projects will be done before school starts. The HVAC system at Tuttle School is very extensive and it may take a couple weeks to get materials based on COVID and the backlog of, of all the construction materials. Any questions with the bids? I have no questions. I have no. Jack? No, no, I was saying yes, good, I'm good. good. So the last piece is building and grounds for Deer Run. Um, to piggyback off our last meeting, uh, dealing with the asbestos issue, the asbestos was cleared up. Our last meeting was on a Tuesday. Um, by the following Monday, the remediation team was there, handled the room. Um, we had the air quality tests come back out. The samples were tested again for both air and ground samples. Both came back clear. So we are now, um, we have abated the area properly. The state has signed off on it, so we are all clear at Deer Run School for that. Just wanted to make you all aware of that as well. Questions? Yeah, now I have a question. <laughs> what's, up, what's up, Jack? Hey, RJ, do you, I mean, you know, I, I totally respect your recommendations and such. Do you have any idea why only one company would bid on these these jobs? Is there any? No, so we, we contact many of our local vendors yep. um, seeking bids. Many of them are saying that material is a problem and the cost yep. of the material is the problem, so it's not in their best interest to bid because it's fluctuating so much. A large company like MM Corps has more purchasing power because they're more northeast wide and, and more like they're all along the east coast. So they're able to get materials a little bit faster. So I don't know if that's discouraging some people, but it seems to be that's all that's coming through for us. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. We do post in the red register to let them know that all bid specs are on the website. They're on the website for the whole bid period. Um, and if anybody has further questions, we keep copies in our office for anything further.
Yeah, that's all I have, unless anybody has any further questions. No. no. In closing the meeting? Yes. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right, good evening. Um, chair, oh no, roll call attendance, please, Melissa. Okay, Tia De Palma. Here. Jennifer DeLongo, Lisa Geraci Anastasio, Tom Hennessy, Tom Murtaugh, Marianne Pellegrino. Here. Erica Santiago. Here. Jack Stacy. Here. And Michelle DeLucia. Here. this evening really um, I'm just gonna mention that in about a month from today we will be back <laughs> in school for the 2021-2022 school year it is oh, summer is flying by um, I do um, remind everyone I believe it is it August 30th for um, convocation. convocation is it the 30th yes yeah, the 30th if, if you guys can make it it's always a pretty um, really exciting Day what to see everybody that fall get on? up. It's a Monday. Monday. Oh, okay. It's a Monday. It's at what? 8:30. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 8:30. 8:30. I'm sorry. Did you say 3:30 or 8:30? I said 8:30. 8:30. Yeah. Okay. We're having a nighttime party. <laughs> All right. So um, also, everyone knows that the August 10th uh, meeting will be canceled. If we need to meet before the scheduled August 24th meeting, we will call a special meeting. Other than that, uh, again, we're still waiting to uh, receive more guidance on mask policy. What we do know is they will be required on the bus. Um, however, we are still, again, waiting to hear from uh, the state and the health department on uh, during the school day. However, I do remind everyone, the more people in our community that are vaccinated, the better chances we, we have of possibly having an option. Okay. All right, and that is all I have for tonight. Um, correspondence has been loaded to the pads, and so I'm gonna ask for subcommittee reports. Um, I'll start policy subcommittee. We do have a couple policies that'll be on this evening. Um, and for community outreach, um, Nothing yet, but we will, just to remind, we are going to be participating in the back to school picnic. Um, so more details will be coming for that event. Um, personnel, we are making progress with custodian um, negotiations as well as administrative negotiations. That's right. Up to date with Jack? That. Here he is. Athletics. Um, not much to report. We did have two members of the Girls track and field team make all area. Unfortunately, I left their names home when I came to New Hampshire. So um, I will report, I'll give you their names at, the, at our next meeting, but um, congratulations on the two young ladies who did make uh, New Haven Register's all area track and field team. Thank you, Jack. Oh, I just read it. Yep. All right, so um, at this time, since other, our other committee chairs are not here. I will turn it over to Erica. Yes, to thank you, before. thank you. Um, so yes, the, the summer is closing in on us and we're just about a month away from the start of the school year. Um, our progression on our buildings and operations is going really great. Uh, we are on schedule with everything. Um, our hiring has been uh, very robust, as you can see from the hire and rehire list this evening. Um, and we're gonna to continue to interview and fill all of the vacancies prior to the school year. Um, we are in very good shape relative to the filling of vacancies. 
Um, and our next big push will be for uh, filling paraprofessional vacancies. Um, we do have a lot of individuals, you, you saw some resignations, who are leaving our district and we wish them well. They are stepping into leadership positions and or positions at a higher level um, and we're really um, happy for them. Um, I see that we have some members of the band here, so I'll, I'll give a little update relative to our progress with the hiring of, of our band teacher. Today, the high school did conduct interviews, and I do believe they have a recommended candidate. Um, and the candidate, um, I believe, is interested in also doing band. Band is an, is an addition to um, the music position that we're hiring for at the high school, and it falls in the teacher's contract as an additional stipend for the individual outside of the regular school day. Um, so in addition to the, mar to the band course that they teach during the school day as part of their uh, course load. So um, I believe that they were checking references and following the interview procedures, policies, and protocols per the district um, and that we should, should everything go okay, would have a recommendation for higher um, to the board. If we're not meeting, um, again, I encourage the board to add to the agenda this evening to allow us to hire um, prior to the board convening at the end of August so we can secure all of our individuals' teaching positions and fill all of our vacancies in a timely manner so that we have an adult in front of every single class and our kids um, for the opening of school. And that is it. Okay. Yep. Assistant Superintendent. Okay. Um, I'd like to invite the board and interested parents and members of the public to consider attending curriculum advisory council meetings next year. Um, these meetings are designed to provide transparency to the public about curriculum instruction and assessment and provide equity of voice to all stakeholders. I have a tentative schedule of next year's meetings, which will be held quarterly on or around the end of the marking period, October 26, 2021, January 25, 2022, March 22, 2022. Okay. Can I, should I repeat no. that? No. Okay. Um, I'd also like to thank our district music teachers who did take time out of their summer schedule last week to discuss a plan for building our program in light of COVID interruptions. Five teachers convened via Zoom to brainstorm ideas to ensure students could participate in general and instrumental music safely next year while building a successful and sustainable program. Um, I'll be asking families to be on the lookout for a communication from our office in the next week to gather um, for an interest inventory in instrumental music in the upper elementary grades and middle school. Um, if you are a parent looking for, your, for ways to encourage your child to read this summer, I'd like you to please consider visiting our website, um, East Haven Summer Reading. Students also ha may not know this, but they have the opportunity to borrow popular titles via the Sora app, um, which, is able, which is available on their Chromebook through the class link portal, um, and may also be downloaded on their uh, device with and use um, an East Haven login. Um, to access very popular and exciting books to read. And then finally, I'd like to inform families that uh, museums are free in the state of Connecticut for families exploring um, through from July 1st through September 6th. Connecticut children aged 18 and under, plus one accompanying Connecticut resident adult, can per visit participating museums free of charge. Um, for more information, go to uh, the CT Visit website. And that is linked in my report, which will be in the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to add to make sure that you check each individual, you know, museum or like aquarium. We got there and they told us all the free spots were sold out, so we had to pay. You book oh. your tickets online yeah. prior to your visit. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're all booked through. Oh yeah, the we fall. did it, we they're did it through the. The, the, the links and all the information, as well as the flyer and the governor's announcement, was in my newsletter that I sent out yeah. two mm -hmm. weeks ago. Thank you. That was a surpriser. And oh, before we move on, um, we should congratulate the superintendent. Tonight she let us know that she had a piece um, published, correct? Yes. Thank you. Oh, I just you, you, you just walked in right, oh, right after. 
So yes. congratulations on your hard work. Thank you. Appreciate it that. Out today? What? It comes out today. Yes, it was posted this evening, and they're going to a big circulate push tomorrow. So um, the pandemic forced my district to make one big change worth keeping. The disruptive change of COVID-19 can offer opportunities even in the face of tragedy. Yeah. Thank That's you, great. Erica. I yeah, no problem. Yes. Congratulations. Thanks. Good, good memory. Yeah. <laughs> so that brings us to approval of meeting minutes for a regular meeting July 13th, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for July 13th, 2021. I will second that. Okay. Any questions or comments? Um, being that we have a member joining remotely, we do need to do roll call vote for all agenda items. Melissa? I'm ready. Tia De Palma? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Four in favor, motion carries. Right. So that brings up. us to the approval of the consent agenda. We have purchase orders over 7,000 for 2020. 2021 and 2021 and 2022, as well as invoices for 2020, 21 in the amount of $181,278.61. And for the 21, 22 school year invoices in the amount of $165,487.01. Make Tia De Palma make a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. I, I, I will second it. Okay. And any questions or comments? If not, Melissa, roll call. Tia De Palma? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Great. So that brings us to our audience of citizens portion of this evening. Is there anyone here who would like to speak? I just ask that if you go up to the mic and state your name and address, or maybe Bob will bring it to you. I don't know. Is Sorry. it wireless? No. Okay. Oh. So uh, can I take this off while I'm speaking? Okay. So I'm. My name is Derek Cody, and I'm going into my senior year. I have to say my address too on the mic. I don't know, do students have to? It's written. It's written. Go ahead, just for the okay. record. So I'm going into my, with my final year of band coming up and our first real season since 2019, we're all very excited to go out there and perform to just be the best like we always strive to do. And with Mr. Aldano concluding his time here, we need someone just like him that will push us to be the absolute best in what we do. And the requirements needed to get this position don't seem to equal the characteristics of the marching band director that would lead us to success just like he did, I feel. And maybe the requirements for a band teacher, but I don't feel it's the requirements for a marching band director. To me and all the other band members, band is not just a group, it is a true family where we all have a common goal of creating art. Without a fit person to lead it, it will never be the same. From my perspective, this is my final year with the group and I'm going to be the drum major. Being the established leader in the band's performances in the season, I do not want to see the band's success decrease due to someone who lacks the required knowledge of a marching band director being thrown into Mr. Lodano's prior position, which is integral to the band and its efforts. As drum major, I want to lead our band to success, but that would not be possible without someone like Mr. Lodano, with a lot of experience that pushes us to put all of our effort into all that we do and teaches us all that we need to know to be good performers. Band means so much to me and the other members. It has changed my life. It provided a second family for me where I'm doing what I love, succeeding through our seasons together. I don't want to see this band's downfall now or in the near future. So I feel changes should be made to this application in order to find the absolute right fit for the music department to do what Mr. Lodano did best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Do I have to say my address or? No, that's okay. You know, What's your name? Um, my name is Ava Maroney. Um, 
I'm a fifth year member of the marching band and I'm going to read something from Alex Shadman, our assistant drum major for the upcoming season who couldn't be here today. Um, I would like to make you aware of the importance of the high school co-op marching band for both the town and the students involved. The marching band community welcomes all students from both East Haven High School and North Brantford High School who want to pursue their love for music and make many new friends and memories. The message that the co-op marching band always follows revolves around inclusivity and perseverance. Joining the band in 2018, I was nervous to be part of such a prestigious group, but I was welcomed with open arms and quickly realized that the excitement and enjoyment this community that comes with this community. We are in need of a new director to help lead us throughout the year and keep us moving forward. In 2019, the East Haven Club Marching Band received both the title of state champions and national champions, a feat that allows each individual in the band to maintain our drive for success. With the global pandemic and the loss of a talented group of seniors, our numbers have decreased significantly. However, our passion still resides within us and we are as relentless as ever. We ask that you hear our concerns and assist us in our search to find a new director for the co-op marching band. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Um, first, I would like to start by uh, what's it called thanking, uh, thanking the board for allowing uh, allowing us, the band members, to uh, speak today. Um, uh, thank you for allowing us to comment on other matters that mean a lot to us. Uh, my name is Ryan uh, Siang. I am a uh, senior member of the marching band. Um, I am the uh, brass section leader uh, of the marching band. <clears throat> Two years ago, the East Haven Co-op Marching Band won state and national championships with their award-winning show, In Ashes Ending. We, the band members, have worked um, tirelessly inside and outside of school to ensure our success. We could have only worked so hard thanks to our drive to excellence um, and the inspiration and assistance of diligent staff members in the marching band, including our band director, Mr. Ladana. Um, last year, we performed virtually with our show, uh, Red Sky in Morning. And though we practiced as much as we did last year, uh, due to recent events, we were unable to reach the same level of skill that we um, achieved the year prior. This year, with a, show, with a new show including songs from the musical Newsies, we are expected to perform in front of a live, uh, live audience and return to the former level of excellence uh, that our band and school are known for. However, with the departure of our band director, we band members are left without a leader to help and uh, help and guide us to that goal. As such, we require a strong and energetic band director who is willing to inspire the same level of excellence uh, in new and returning band members. However, aspiring high school marching band directors uh, may not find that information regarding the band in their application. What they may find is that their uh, job is to simply direct students in musical programs and performances for school events. With a band director that only points in the direction where students may or may not go, students are deprived of the experience and assistance necessary for conducting their futures as musicians. The band is deprived of a strong and energetic leader excuse me, who fully understands their position as the director of the East Haven Co-op Marching Band. We, as band members, parents, and staff, urge you, the board, to review and revise the music band teacher application so that our marching band can return to its former prestige with a strong and energetic leader who is willing to carry the banner through it all. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Great speaker. Is there anyone else? All right, I think I, I can speak on behalf of the board to say that the marching band is a great sense of pride of not only to the Board of Education, but to the town itself. Um, and I believe it is a priority for us to, you know, secure a director, but I'm not sure if it could go into the job description. Does it have to be a stipend? It is a stipend position as part of the teacher's contract. So it's outside of the job description for filling um, the former music teacher's job responsibilities in terms of course load at the high school. So we can certainly meet with some of these students and get some input relative to posting the band director stipend mm -hmm. um, description for which is located in the stipend section of the contract. Okay. Would you guys be willing to help out with that? Great. Thank you. Perfect. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. All right. So if there's 
If there's anyone else here, no? Okay, we we're gonna move on then to new business, 7.1. Right, I'm not skipping a page, no, 7.1. No. 7.1, here we go. All right, discussion and possible action on the approval of the speech and language pathologist assistant contract. Which we went over in mm -hmm. subcommittee. Does anybody have any questions for clarifying before we, then I will ask for a motion at this time. I make a motion to approve the speech and language pathologist assistant contract. Second. Okay, roll call. Tia De Palma. Yes. Marian Pellegrino. Yes. Erica Santiago. Yes. Jack Stacy. Yes. And Michelle Delusia. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. So that brings us to 7.2, discussion and possible action on the approval of the mid-management MOU. Are we? So yes, so the mid-management MOU was discussed in executive session uh, relative to the two positions and the details there. Mm -hmm. So I make a motion to um, approve the um, MOU for mid-management. Second. Okay, does anybody have any questions or comments? All right, so Melissa, roll call vote, please. Tia De Palma? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Jack? Jack Stacy? Is he frozen? He looks frozen. Yeah. He looks frozen? Yeah, let's give it a minute. Jack? Come back, Jack. He's still there. Somebody had this. He's there, I see. His name's there. We're going to have to get in a minute. Jack? <laughs> we need him for our, our we quorum. Him. <laughs> we do need him for a quorum. Well, he's there. We just, I we... see him. Can he type in the chat? Might be best if he shuts the camera and we could just. Just as audio. Yeah, Correct. just as audio. We all went down. <laughs> oh. Did you ever find those songs? He's back. He's back, great. Jack's back. I'm back, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Jack's a yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. That brings us to 7.3, discussion and possible action on the approval of the paraprofessional MOU, also discussed in subcommittee. If there's no questions, I'll ask for a motion. I make a motion to approve the paraprofessional MOU. Second it. Any questions or comments? If not, Melissa, roll call vote, please. Tia De Palma? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Brings us to 7.4 discussion and possible action on the approval of the East Haven High School. Assistant principal position. I see some familiar faces here tonight um, from the students that helped us in the interview process. And so at this time, um, I'll ask for the superintendent's recommendation. Yes, so it is the recommendation of the interview committee to put forth Anthony Russell as the candidate selected for the East Haven High School assistant principal position. Okay. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve the hire of East Haven High School Assistant Principal Anthony Russell. Second. At this time, are there any questions or comments? All right, then Melissa, roll call. Tia De Palma. Yes. Marianne Pellegrino. Yes. Erica Santiago. Yes. Jack Stacy. 
With the recommendation of the committee and with the performance in previous interviews, I wholeheartedly say yes. Michelle DeLucia. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Here you 7.5, discussion and possible action on the approval of the K-5 Special Education Coordinator. As discussed. Yes. As discussed with special um, and uh, subcommittee, and I will ask the superintendent for a recommendation at this time. Yep, so um, I am recommending the committee's recommendation to hire Sarah Collette as the K-5 Special Education Coordinator. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the K-5 Special Education Coordinator, Sarah Collette. I second. Does anybody have any questions or comments? If not, Melissa? Tia De Palma? Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All right, um, 7.6, discussion and possible action on the approval of the revision of the school attire policy 5132. Everyone should have received um, the updated revision, right? It went out to everybody's email? Yep. Hopefully, if everyone had a chance to take a look at that, um, would you like me to read it? It adds jeans. Okay. It adds the color black. It takes out... Um, gender identification and combines that whole section. Okay. It also just talks about um, at lengths that are appropriate or not wearing it at lengths that are inappropriate as opposed to specifying exactly and also takes out any language that um, you suggested in subcommittee such as cleavage and midriffs. Yes, we don't wanna be gender biased. Right. Okay. And I think All right. it pretty much yeah. I, it, everyone it does that and, and I think it reads it right. reads and I think well. it, it does, I think it accommodates both the parents that are looking for the more structured mm -hmm. with uh, uniforms and it allows some flexibility. So I think I it's agree. good it district wise. It's a best there's some structure good to medium. it still, but I think this is the best happy medium for everyone. Yeah. So I agree. And, and All right. So I do so I too. do I have a motion? I make a motion to pass um, and approve the revision of the school attire policy and regulation number 5132. I'll second, second that. We'll both second it. Okay. We'll give it to Mindy. <laughs> All right. At this time, any qu other questions or comments? All right. Melissa. Tia De Palma. Yes. Er Erica Santiago. Yes. Sorry, I went out of turn. Marianne Pellegrino. Yes. <laughs> Keeping you on your toes. Jack Stacy. Yes. And Michelle DeLucia. Yes. Motion, motion passes unanimously. All right, 7.7, .7, discussion and possible action on the approval of the revision of bus conduct policy 5131.1 as discussed in subcommittee. Um, if you remember, we, we sh kind of just struck a line that was replicated in another um, item number. In cell phone, uh, in yeah. 15 and cell, with cell phone use, it was, um, I think, redacted. It was, and just um, no video, video, yeah. video on the bus. Yes. Made sense. And I will ask oh. for a motion. Motion to approve of the revision of bus, the bus conduct policy number 5131.1. Second. Any questions or comments? If not, Melissa. Tia De Palma. Yes. Marianne Pellegrino. Yes. Erica Santiago. Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All right, we have 7.8, discussion and possible action on the approval of the use of rental funds for the East Haven High School projects. And next meeting we'll have a threshold or bare yep. minimum. Yeah, I'll bother doing information on our current balance and where we want the threshold to be. Okay, all right. So where do you want the, the um, money? Yeah, so for this item here, we are asking for the rental account to contribute to the installation of the high school fencing project for the baseball and softball fields, as well as the high school wrestling mats for this upcoming year. Uh, we will, in, in the future, we'll utilize this account for all, all areas of the high school that suit rental activity, including the auditorium, mm -hmm. gym, 
um, fields and so and so forth. Makes sense to have it cell so phone. This, it wouldn't just be high school things either, does it? Have no, it the, it will be. the youth. Well, this is just the high school items. rental. The youth use the it, but I'm saying yeah. Yeah, the rental account. I thought it's specific for high school usage, high school. so it'll replenish that high school usage. <laughs> the rental. Is there a separate account for like middle school rental? Do we rent middle school? No, but they, mm -hmm. they, to rent your high school, you have all groups that benefit from that. I'm just sure. saying that doesn't mean only the high school could benefit from that account. Correct? Am I no, right? When you Erica? make, imp when no. you make improvements, when you yeah. make improvements, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I think those. I think it says East Haven High School project. It's because of the location. Those items are specifically up here for now. Right. For right. Now. Right. That's all I'm asking is if they could go other places. Anywhere places. we rent should use that funds to self sufficient. Yeah, they should be self sufficient. To improve its own. Yeah, Correct. Right. Do all rental funds go into that account, or is there a separate one for the different facilities? Um, the middle school, when we do rent it, it's very minimal. I know. It goes into that account. 98% of our rentals are from the high school. Yeah. For dance recitals, weightlifting competitions, the auditoriums for plays. Should we specify that somehow that it's one account? I mean, what do you think? It could be one account with multiple lines in it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you think about it, when you use those funds to put into the high school, it truly benefits all our kids because our kids do use these facilities and they end up here at the mm -hmm. high school as well. True. You're right. So, okay. um, but you know, we'll make sure that in the rental account, just like our student activities account, there's different lines for, for the middle school or the high school, depending on when the rental income is coming from. Kind of like how we're using the um, cafeteria fund, Correct. right? To Correct. Yep. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the use of rental funds for the East Haven High School projects. I will second that. Any questions or comments? If not, Melissa? Tia De Palma? Yes. Marian Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. That brings a 7.9 discussion and possible action on the approval of hires, rehires, and stipends. As discussed in subcommittee, so at this time, if no one has any clarifying questions, I'll ask for a motion. I make a motion to approve the list of hires, rehires, and stipends. I second. Okay. Any questions or comments? I just want to comment that um, I know it looks like there are, there are a lot that come in and there's a lot that go. And, I just want to reiterate what Erica said earlier. Um, Superintendent Forty was saying that you know people do move on for you know different reasons, and it, you know it could be a promotion or not, whatever. We do wish them well, but we also welcome new people into into East Haven as well. And like you said, we're we're working pretty. We're doing a good job, right, um, Jen? Right? There's yeah. a lot. Yeah, there's not. Jen's busy. Um, <laughs> You're busy. Jen. My office has been very busy, yes, as you can see. Um, but yes, we've been um, swiftly filling all the teaching, open teaching positions. So we are down to a very minimal amount left. So okay. we should be fully Everyone's staffed in that. Been busy. Great. Yeah. Jen, Jen's been incredibly efficient in as soon as we get a resignation, making sure that the requisition to post is is received from the building principal, that it's posted per contract guidelines, that we're following up, hiring people, and the turnaround time has dramatically increased mm -hmm. in filling those vacancies. And so well, you know, why while we've seen a lot of retirements like many districts and we've seen a lot of, of movement, um, we've filled the majority of all of those vacancies. Yes. Um, so you know, we there are some positions on our website that we do leave open all the time. Yes. Because they tend to turn over more than others. And so, um, you know, it may not mean that there's a vacancy in that position, but we like to continually collect applications and have them in our system so that if something does mm -hmm. open up, we have a pool of candidates to pull from. Okay. That's great. Mm -hmm. And for, I'd just like to comment and congratulate uh, Ms. Kaplan at the middle school for her retirement. Yes. yes, thank you. Oh, okay. Yep. Congratulations to her. I did too. <laughs> wow. Okay. So yeah. I make a motion. Wait. Right? No, yeah. So we got, we got I kind of alluded oh, to it. Bob wanted to just also oh, one please. of our. I just want to turn my mic on. So I just want to congratulate Ben Dix, who has resigned after four very, very great years in my office. 
Uh, ben did a nice job for us, grew professionally and personally, and he has assumed the position of Director of Pupil Services in Hamden Public Schools. Oh, wow. um, and he's gonna do a great job, and I will be his mentor this year, oh, as, well nice. as, as well as Michelle Fortunas. As well as another individual <laughs> who left our district to take a, like a leadership special education position who was just appointed a director mm -hmm. in another Prospect. district. Oh, so, wow. you know, that's a testament to Bob and his mentorship and his leadership and building the capacity of his staff who then, while they leave us, are moving on to director level positions. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and I'm glad I'm glad you did mention it because I know a lot of time it is disheartening people see resignations, but you know, we want to see growth and you know, you hope you hope for growth. Everyone hopes mm -hmm. for growth in their own personal, you know, lives and things like that. So it's nice to see them be so successful. So yeah. It yeah. Is, yeah. That's a good point. All right, so Melissa. Okay. Tia De Palma. Yes. Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. We have discussion and possible action on the approval of the vendor for the motor and blower wheel replacement on unit ventilator bid for EHA and JMMS. Wow. It's a mouthful. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, do we have a little description? On yeah, this? so this will replace all the, um, the motor and blower wheels. Just so you know, when you walk in those buildings, in each classroom, there's a large unit by the window that circulates and ventilates the air. And many of them squeak because the belts and mo motors in them are probably 30 years, 30 years old. So with the grant funding we received from ESSER II, we will be replacing all the motor and blowers in those units in JMMS and the, and the East Haven Academy. So our, my recommendation is to award the bid to MCOR mm -hmm. in the amount of $99,640.40. Okay. I make that motion to make the approval for the motor and blower wheel replacement and unit ventilation for EHA and JMMS, and I forgot the, the sum there. MCOR. To MCOR? MCOR. M M $99,640.40. Thank you. You're welcome. That's I will second that. Yeah. All right, Marianne. Um, <laughs> any questions or comments? <laughs> okay. Um, Oil the door. And Jack staying door. in a haunted house this weekend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 Melissa, uh, roll call vote. <laughs> um, Sorry. Tia De Palma. Yes. I'm not renting that place, so I'm telling you. Marianne Pellegrino. Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Jack? I can't hear you guys. Are we on uh, 710? Yes. 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 I'd say yes. 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 Can you see me? <laughs> Michelle DeLucia. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All I'm right. promoting yes on 7.10. Okay. All right, we're good. He's back. All right. So 7.11, discussion and possible action on the approval of the vendor for the all-purpose room HVAC split system bid for Tuttle School. So this, again, is a replacement um, for the HVAC system in the gym at, Tut at Tuttle School. Um, MCOR was the only bidder in the amount of $135,212. Do I have a motion? make a motion to accept the vendor uh, for the all-purpose room HVAC split system bid for Tuttle School. Second. Any questions or comments? All right. If not, Melissa. Tia De Palma. Yes. Marion Pellegrino. Yes. Erica Santiago. <laughs> yes. Jack Stacy. Yes. 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 <laughs> and Michelle okay, DeLucia. Yes. <laughs> Motion carries. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Discussion and possible action on the approval of the vendor for the two three ton ductless heat pumps in East Haven Academy. So, this is for the installation of two um, 
talk assist air air handlers in the academy all-purpose room which houses as their gym and cafeteria this will provide them air conditioning and heat if needed m core was the only bidder and that's my re uh my re recommendation for twenty one thousand twenty nine dollars even okay do i have a motion I make a motion to approve the vendor MCOR for the two three-ton ductless heat pumps in East David Academy. I second. Okay. Any questions or comments? Melissa, roll call. Tia De Palma. Yes. Marianne Pellegrino. Yes. Erica Santiago. Yes. Jack Stacy. Jack? I think all is other yes. Yes. Seven yes. twelve. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Did you hear me? We got gotcha. you. Yes. We got it. Yes. <laughs> and Michelle Delucia. Yes. <laughs> Motion carries. <laughs> all right. So that brings us to seven point one three discussion and possible action on the BOE contribution to teacher convocation event. We there having some uh, festivities, some food trucks, and, and is it entertainment too? Yeah, we're doing some, some surprises and something special to, you know, let our teachers know how much we value and appreciate them. And so we'd welcome a contribution to the board on sponsoring a food truck. Do you have a ballpark of what you think would be the ideal amount to make this a successful yes, event? Yes, we do. Miss Church? So happy you asked that. So, <laughs> starting tomorrow, well, Starting tomorrow, I guess. I will, and I have reached out already to um, change the Chamber of Commerce um, to share some of the information. But um, probably the, the ballpark of sponsoring a food truck, we're thinking 200 to 250 people per truck, and um, the ballpark is about $10 a person. So it would be 2,000 to 2,500, um, depending on, on which truck. So that there will be multiple trucks because we're anticipating a little over 500 individuals for convocation. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's nice. It is. Um, definitely. There's a very big um, social emotional learning mm -hmm. for adult theme to this year. Um, so I, I really hope that you can make it because I guarantee it will be an experience you won't forget. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, Julie. All right. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. Two thousand. Two. Oh, not to exceed. Right. Not to exceed. Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead. Okay. Um. Uh, okay. So uh, to accept the contribution, not to exceed two thousand. Two thousand um, dollars to the teacher convocation event. Now, is there a reason we have to set it at that? I'm just curious. No, I was just wondering if we were putting an amount oh. for a contribution. Well, yeah. Usually, well, if, when you would, yeah. no, she said, is there a reason why? No, I would. I mean, I, normally when you're going to give a contribution, they want to know how much. Mm -hmm. So that's why it was. Oh, there is. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I get that, but I didn't know. I like, know. so if it's over by like 500, like if you're short and can't have it, the event, you'll tell us, right? I mean, that's all I'm saying. Right. And, okay. and I did want to make it clear and share with the board that I have um, reached out to individuals, like I said. So we have an attorney who's sponsoring something. We have. Um, business individuals who are sponsoring things. So That's it nice. truly is a, a community giving back to our teachers. Okay. All right. You want to do 25? They want, or we just that way want it covers to one, cover one, one truck. That truck yeah. It's going to say. Um, sponsored by the. Sponsored make it the best truck. I don't want to give away the truck or anything, but yeah. it'll say sponsored by East Haven. But we still don't know exactly how much, but around that ballpark. Okay. Yeah. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll I do the whole truck. I didn't catch it. 2,500. That's great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can right. okay. we make the motion? Um, I, I'm going to oh, clarify. Yeah, yeah. Would like make me a motion to, to approve for the vendor for. Oh, excuse me. The board of ed contribution to the teacher for the teacher convocation event. Not you know to keep it around 2,500. Yeah, that's a second. A whole truck. <laughs> <laughs> we want our pictures on it. No. Oh, yeah. no. Yes. Right. Take our pictures. Second. I second it. Go on. <laughs> All right. Any questions or comments? All right, if, if not, Melissa, roll call. Tia De Palma? Yes. Marian Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? 
Yes. Motion passes unanimously. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion to add 7.14 um, discussion of possible action on authorizing the administration to pay invoices and process new hires um, in so between our next meetings. But so we first have to just approve to add mm -hmm. 7.14. Okay, okay. Yep. there you go. Okay. Any questions or comments on adding the motion? If not, Melissa, roll call to add 7.14. Sorry, just getting my notes together. Um, Tia De Palma. Yes. Marianne Pellegrino. Yes. Erica Santiago. Yes. Jack Stacy. Yes. And Michelle Deluce. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Motion passes unanimously. All right. So we have discussion and possible action on authorizing administration to pay invoices and process hires um, prior to us meeting on August 24th. I second that. You made that a motion, right? Sure, I'll make the motion, okay. Second, uh, any questions or comments? No, if not, Melissa? Tia De Palma? Yes. Marian Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All right, so I'd like to add 7.15, which would be discussion and possible action on extending the school day in accordance to teacher's contract, Article 5, Section B. Um, is that a motion? To or? add the agenda item. Oh, I'll second I, make, motion I to second add. to add, yeah. And I'll second it. All right. <laughs> if there's no questions or comments, Melissa, roll call to add 7.15. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Just to be clear, Tia, you made the motion? I did. Michelle, or Michelle. Michelle. I okay. second. She seconded, so and I'm saying yes to it. Okay. <laughs> and Marianne, you seconded it. Okay. Tia De Palma? Yes. <laughs> Marianne Pellegrino? Yes. Erica Santiago? Yes. Jack Stacy? Yes. And Michelle DeLucia? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All right. So 7.15 discussion of possible action on extending the school day. Um, in accordance to Article 5, Section B of the teacher's contract. Erica, if you could give just a little background on what parameters we are going to set with that school day extension. So that was uh, 30 minutes extending the school day um, in accordance with the contract um, compensated appropriately in accordance with the salary schedule. Mm -hmm. And that you've worked out that, so. Just we have the information. You have the information. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. It is so. within the board's discretion to do so. Um, so I am just motioning that we take a vote on this. So are you motioning for? I am motioning that we extend the school day in accordance to the teacher's contract, Article 5, Section B, and compensate accordingly. I second. All right. Questions or comments? I think this is a really good move. I would think it's going to support our students. Mm -hmm. and, and I like to think that the teachers will agree it's what's best for the students. Did, did you want to put a time on that? No. Time extension, like in terms of 30 minutes? Next, no. Well, oh. No, I don't. How many years? I don't. Do you want to put in? Uh, it seems like an administrative decision. Yeah. Well, well, no, because if we're enacting it, then it needs to be right, three years. with the three years. Okay. Three years. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to make that sure that I'm clear. The whole three years. So what is that, 2025? Or is, wait. 21, 22, 22, 23, 24. Yep. Okay. Wait, is it? 21, 22. 24. To carry it going until the 23, 24 school year. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 24. Okay. All right. I don't understand that. Now, if we're changing it, and it's been the way that so at this time frame for years and years and years without specifying every time, why would there be a time limit on um, when it ends? Funding. F purposes. Funding. Oh. Right now we have grant funding to be able to try to close the achievement gap for our students. Got it. Okay. It's something and I think we would all like to continue, but I mean, it's going to be. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't understand the funding. It'll also give us time to assess and make sure yes, that we're on exactly. target with what we're trying right, to accomplish. Right. 
Okay. So, at the stage, do we have a second? Second. second. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There we go. All right. Any, any no well, other questions? Question. Can you hear me? Yes, Jack. I can. Okay. So, it's, again, it's hard to hear. I hope if this wasn't said before, but that motion should include with appropriate compensation? Yes, it yes. does. Yep. Okay. Ar the article states that too, I believe. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good question, though. All right. So are Thank we you. voting now or yeah. we okay. we If there's any the other motion. questions or comments, the motion is made and we are voting. Yeah. All right. No other we questions did make or comments? The motion, we right? did make the okay. motion. We Good. added it. Yep. We we're all set. Uh, Melissa, fire away. Tia De Palma. Yes. Ron. Yes. Mary Hinton Pellegrino. Yes. Erica Santiago. Yes. Jack Stacy. Yes. And Michelle DeLucia. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. And I'm sure we will have information out shortly on the change to the school day and start times and yes. everything else. Okay. This is this is good though. This is good. This is so needed. Yeah. I'm happy. Okay. All right. Um, so at this time, we have a uh, discussion concerning future agenda items. As, as you know, of course, do sub submit those. Um, and also, if you're going to have a subcommittee meeting, just make sure you try to give Melissa a, a, at least a week notice to organize it and get it into the uh, agenda schedule. As of now, our next meeting is August 24th. 24th. Yep. I would just say if we're going to roll out any... Um, when we roll out information to the families, maybe we should have, besides the newsletter, which sometimes, you know, when looking at it like as a whole, it's kind of overwhelming, we could just like send something out that's like, what's new with East Haven this year, and then just clear bullet point information. We may send that as a separate, whole separate. Yes, that's, that's what I mean, like something yeah. very simple. We should simple probably put it out clear. to the newspaper. Yeah, like for, it should like, be you very know. clear, and yep. these are the new things that will be, because I mean, I think there's a lot of confusion, and that'll be a very simple, clean, clear, communication for parents that way because mm -hmm. you know I could just see the first week of school how many parents didn't realize that we had an extra 30 minutes and they're calling the bus company I mean could that do already happen do, do calls like you know for yeah. important information yeah like that oh yeah, yeah. Yep. trust me yeah. I get them I, <laughs> Sunday night's I a big one in my house yeah. <laughs> yeah, but even if it was something that we like mailed home you know yes just so that they knew that it wasn't missed that everyone yeah. received this information everyone knows what, even if it has our mask policy, so be it what the state, you know, guidelines put in. Hopefully we'll have mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but at least we have something with all communication. And if so. need be, we'll call a special meeting to go over that policy as well as the new yeah, schedule. Yeah, we could. That we would, would do that. Nice yes. thing to do. Okay. All right. So, if not, I'm going to ask for a motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Motion. Second. All right, meeting, in, meeting adjourned.